so you will get the chance to to close the day and and give your thoughts and ref reflections. Thanks. Be my guest. Okay, Anders. And I actually uh, have written a little bit, and I wrote, "I'm happier now, even if I was pretty happy in the morning." Uh, and the reason is that I have actually felt the openness in the room today that I asked for. Uh, but also the curiosity. And uh, I think that is really the reason why we have met. Uh, so thank you for showing curiosity, being focused at least up until around four o'clock. Um, and that's pretty good work of you all. Um, I have also gotten some new thoughts and ideas, and thanks for those. Uh, I have also been remembered of there is so much more to do in this area. And that's really challenging, but it's also fun, um, because it would be a drag if we would be finished, wouldn't it? Yeah. Uh, when Sille opened this morning and talked about the behavioral economics, she said that the slot machines they communicate, I'm winning, or someone is winning when they say pling pling and the lights go off. And I thought, how would it be online if it would say pling pling, someone has put in new limits for their gambling? What would happen? So every time someone changed the limits or put in the limits, everyone online see it at the same time. What would happen? <laughs> it's really the pack. Uh, and I guess uh, it would change the amount of limits put in place. Uh, we work with some Germans also. Uh, they actually say that we are in the hot state of mind in around 94% of our decisions. Uh, this morning it was at 80%, so it was pretty nice uh, implicating that we would be rational 20% of the decisions. So somewhere then in between 20 and 5% or 6% is rational. The rest is irrational that we do. Uh, Another thing that I have been thinking of is uh, I think it's important that we do not talk about the addicts or the real problem gamblers only when we talk about responsible gaming. Because the most important is to prevent customers to come into problematic gambling habits. And as uh, Per Kolbring said, in Sweden, it's about 120,000 problem gamblers every year, but 100,000 of them change. And that's something that's really interesting to think about. If we really would focus and find measures so that we can stop 10% or 15% of those, that would make a huge difference. And that's one of the challenges that I think uh, that we can take with us. Uh, Francesco Rodano, thank you for uh, lifting us as a good example. Is Francesco still here? Thank you. Uh, I hope you all heard him saying it. <laughs> uh, yes, okay, thank you. Uh, the panic button uh, used when winning, that's interesting because one of the truth that I heard early when I got into this industry, that is, you have to win to become a problematic gambler or an addict. Without winning, you will never turn into a problem gambler. Uh, so connecting the panic button to winnings, that's good. And I think that was Sai Rai. Uh, a lot of what we have been talking about is really about behaviors. And we, human beings, is all about behaviors. 
and that's why we brought in behavioral economics today. Uh, we will continue focusing on it. Uh, these Germans that we work with, um, they use behavioral economics and neuroscience. And one of the insights that we got from them uh, just a couple of weeks ago around responsible gaming is some of the tools that we are proud of, the limits. Uh, I know that Svenska Spel is proud of their budgeting, and Thomas Nilsson also talked about budgeting. Uh, it was really, really clear among our segments, one of the main segments that we have, they do not believe in limits. They love budgeting. And some of the other main segments that we have, they hate budgeting and they like limits. So this is also something that has popped up in several of the presentations. We have to personalize or individualize the tools. So thank you all individuals for being here today. And hopefully I see most of you at the dinner tonight. Thank you.